And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to shift gears a bit uh, away from the chemistry and chemical engineering to the electrical engineering. Uh, so let me go ahead and um, give you an overview of what this is all about. Whoa. Uh, so uh, this is in collaboration with my uh, PhD student, uh, Nusrat, and I'm pleased to report that she successfully defended her PhD this morning with distinction. Uh, and this uh, particular innovation emerged from this uh, 2020 uh, AFOSR MURI Award that UNM is leading. This is a five-year, uh, $7.5 million grant where UNM is the lead uh, institution. And on our team are Maryland, Michigan, Michigan State, and Irvine. So we've developed the technique to generate two electron beams with comparable currents and to 10 and 10 to 20 percent energy difference from a single cathode at a single potential. And I'll explain what that means uh, as we move forward. Recent work has suggested that a high power traveling wave tube, which is an amplifier, can operate in a super exponential gain regime as opposed to a simple exponential gain regime. If instead of using a single electron beam, you use two electron beams, and if the two electron beams have comparable current and have a slight energy difference. Our innovation opens the way to testing this hypothesis in experiment and can revolutionize uh, production devices. So this is a collaboration uh, between the University of New Mexico and uh, University of California at Irvine. Our collaborator, Alex Figaton, uh, proposed a linear theory where uh, he is arguing that uh, a, a multi-stream traveling wave tube um, can have huge benefits uh, in terms of being able to more rapidly amplify a signal and to um, achieve super exponential gain. So what I mean by super exponential gain, instead of the uh, amplification going as e to the alpha times z, where let's say z is the distance along the tube that it's traveling, it could amplify as e to the alpha as an example z squared. So that's a huge um, imp impact on the operation of the device. Okay, so in terms of background, you know, a traveling wave tube is a, you know, it's the backbone of communications, whether it's satellite communications or terrestrial uh, communications. And the, and the traveling wave tube was invented in the 1940s. Uh, here is a picture of, sorry, uh, J.R. Pierce. Uh, who was the uh, inventor of this device. And in 1949, Pierce proposed such a two-stream amplifier. But notice this device is fairly small, and these are relatively low-voltage, low-power devices. So we're not talking about huge powers. We're talking about hundreds of watts, perhaps a kilowatt. And in these low-power devices, it is easy to produce two electron beams. And the way you produce it is you have two cathodes, C1, so this is the uh, coaxial cathode, the inner cathode, C1, C2 is the outer cathode, and you simply use two independent power supplies to power this. So you can dial up whatever voltage you want on one cathode, and you can dial up whatever voltage you want on another cathode. However, when you talk about the high power regime, where when I say high power, instead of, shoot, instead of saying uh, hundreds of watts or kilowatts, I'm talking about a billion watts, a gigawatt. This is what it takes to drive it. This is not a simple, simple power supply. This is a pulse power generator. And it's inconceivable that you would use two of these to try and power two separate electron beams in the same interaction region. In fact, it's impossible. You can't do it because the 
electric fields would be so huge that you would inevitably have a breakdown event. And this gives you a scale, that's Senator Heinrich. Senator Heinrich is the founder of the Directed Energy Caucus in the US Senate. And really the business end of this traveling wave tube would be sitting inside these lead bricks. So what J.R. Pierce was holding in his hands in terms of a traveling wave tube that generates 100 watts of power, you know, that device, which would, is where I'm pointing, would be sitting under these lead bricks uh, in here. And so there's really no way to, to be able to power two separate electron beams with two separate power supplies. And that was this challenge that uh, we gave uh, Nusrat to work on for her PhD. Now, in terms of applications, on the left, you can see applications of conventional TWTs. They are used in everything from radars, whether it's a weather radar or military radar, to navigation beacons, to point-to-point um, -point communications, satellite communications, and in scientific and industrial applications. Just last week, uh, the White House released this report, uh, Fast Track Subcommittee on uh, Critical and Emerging Technologies. And the White House identified 14 critical and emer emerging technologies. And one of them is directed energy. And this is exactly where this innovation fits. In terms of the need and market potential, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so uh, an estimate from a year ago says that the microwave electron tube market, and that is everything, that is, T those include TWTs used for communications, used for radars, used for navigation, et cetera, is a, a annual uh, billion dollar market. And when you talk to directed energy weapons, uh, they're anticipating by 2026, the market will be worth $10.1 billion. But of course, directed energy includes not only microwaves, but includes lasers as well. And by far, lasers are uh, much more expensive than microwaves are. So I would say that 10% of this market would be the microwave portion. So that's a billion dollars. And probably 10 to 20% of that would be the market that would be interested in this innovation. So what is the innovation? So uh, this is a uh, basically a, a simple rendering of how this device works. So the pulse power generator that drives this is that accelerator that, was, that you saw uh, in the photo with me and Senator Heinrich. Uh, that sits to the left here, and that's used to generate a high voltage pulse that comes to moving to the right. And our innovation is this device. Basically, we figured out a way to generate two electron beams by using two cathodes, so two coaxial nested cathodes. A cathode is an electron emitter. You have this cathode out here, which is the outer cathode, and we have this cathode that I'm pointing to, which is the inner cathode. Now, the innovation is actually how we came up with the idea of optimizing the radial position of the inner cathode and to what extent the inner cathode extends to the right, sorry, beyond the outer cathode. And that innovation was a consequence of an analytic theory. That theory is taking a theoretical formulation that was established in the former Soviet, Soviet Union in 1977 that applied to a single cathode and Nusrat in a very um, uh, uh, excellent manner, in a very elegant manner, extended that theory to two nested cathodes and was able to get a closed form analytic solution. And then we were able to perform computer simulations. We were able to perform computer simulations uh, using what we call particle and cell code, which self-consistently solves uh, relativistic Newtonian mechanics with Maxwell's equations for electrons, and we were able to verify the analytic results. So this is the million-dollar uh, plot. 
So what you're seeing here in the solid lines are the, uh, so, so this green line and the dashed uh, black line are the analytical theory calculations. The dashed blue and the solid red are analytical theory calculations. And the points, the solid data points, the red and blue points, the black and green points are the computer simulations. And you can see here, the amazing result is the following. Notice that the electron beam current, which is the right-hand side, which is the red and the blue, we show that at a specific geometry, the uh, outer and inner electron beam currents are exactly the same. And where that occurs, the energy difference between the outer and the inner beam is over 10%. So that is precisely what the theory is asking for. And that is precisely what we have developed. And right now, uh, uh, Nusrat is uh, performing experiments to validate the theory. So we've actually constructed hardware that was informed by the analytical calculations and the particle and cell simulations. And here you see the imprint of an inner beam and an outer beam, and uh, Nusrat will stay as a postdoc for a couple of months with me to wrap up these experiments before taking a position at Stanford uh, Linear Accelerator Center. So uh, this work has already led to two journal publications, first author for Nusrat, five conference proceedings, uh, and uh, this innovation, which was a provisional patent, which was filed last summer. And I'm pleased that um, uh, Nusrat was selected as the Igor Alexev Outstanding Student in Plasma Science Award in 2022 by the IEEE Nuclear and Plasma Sciences Society. This is uh, not a domestic award. This is an international award. The last time uh, a U.S. student won this award was in 2019. Uh, and the last few years, the award winners came from um, uh, the Technion in Haifa, Israel, Wiseman Institute in Israel, uh, a university in Singapore, and the previous uh, U.S. recipient was a Princeton student in 2019. So I'm very proud of Nusrat, and that explains our work, and I'll be happy to answer any uh, questions that you may have.